Remember that time when OpenAI said that GPT-4 would have multimodal capabilities that would soon be able to analyze images and then it like still hasn't happened yet? Yeah, well Meta just did that except with video. Yeah, that's right, AI is watching videos and understanding them now, and it's called Video Llama. There's a new paper in town called Video Llama, an audio visual language model for visual understanding, and we're gonna get into how Video Llama works, and at the end, we'll even look at some examples the researchers cooked up for us, and we get into it all on this episode of AI Focus. There have been efforts to add vision to LLMs, but adding video still remains elusive. This is because it can be hard to comprehend visual static images, not to mention, dealing with video means processing both visual and audio inputs. Here comes Video Llama to save the day, which is an instruction-tuned audio-visual language model for video understanding. Video Llama addresses both the issue of audio-visual integration and the fact that videos are basically moving pictures, aka temporal changes. First, I should mention that Video Llama is built on Blip2 and tuned by MiniGPT4. But what the heck is Blip2? Blip2 is a pre-training method that allows LLMs to see. It does this by combining a pre-trained image encoder with a frozen LLM via something called a querying transformer or Qformer. And after that sentence, I feel like turning into an Autobot. Frozen in this context refers to the model's parameters and just means that less computing is needed to make this work. And when you put this trained image encoder with the LLM known as Vacuna, you get MiniGPT4. MiniGPT4 is a combination of a frozen encoder from Blip2 and the frozen LLM Vacuna. This unique combination gives an LLM the ability to generate descriptions. It can describe pictures in great detail and even create websites based on rough drafts or ideas. But that's not all. It can also write stories and poems inspired by pictures, solve problems shown in pictures, and even teach people how to cook by looking at pictures of food. So Blip2 allows the model to see, and Mini GPT-4 describes it. I think that's the simplest way to put it. Okay, moving on. Now that we're finally talking about Video Llama, there are two main branches that make it up. A visual language branch and an audio language one which help the LLM to understand both visual and auditory content in videos. The video frames and audio signals are transformed into query representations by things called Qformers. These representations are compatible with the textual inputs of LLMs. In the visual branch, there's a video Qformer that captures the temporal changes in visual scenes. The component takes the pre-trained image encoder and puts it into a video encoder so that it can process video frames individually like it's processing separate pictures. Looking at the graph first, the pre-trained image encoder analyzes each video frame. Then there's a layer that gives the temporal info to the video frames. And then the Qformer converts the visual representations into text for the LLM to understand. This Qformer shares the same architecture as the aforementioned Blip2. Now for the audio branch. It has a pre-trained audio encoder to figure out a sound. Then it goes through a layer that injects temporal information into audio segments. Then an audio cue former fuses different audio segments and then passes it to a linear layer to translate it for the LLM. ImageBind is used as the audio encoder. I've done an in-depth video on ImageBind that I will link at the end of the video, but it's a joint embedding model that allows many different types of modalities as inputs. It can turn audio to image, text to image, image to audio, and even plays around with depth and measurement. There's really a whole mess of things it can do. It's Meta's attempt at making AI more human but it serves a great purpose here as well. Before we get to see examples, how was each branch trained? First, we'll talk about the visual language branch. The branch was trained on a huge data set of stock footage and text descriptions. And in order to further align textual output with the video, the visual related components of the model were trained on a large data set of video captions with a video to text generation task. This is where an LLM was presented with a video and asked to give its description. This worked well for descriptions, but the model didn't follow instructions too well. So the researchers fine-tuned these components using Mini GPT-4, among other tools, to enhance following instructions, and it worked like a charm. They did a similar thing on the audio side, where the audio components of the model were first pre-trained on audio caption data sets with an audio to text generation task. But audio to text data is a rarity, which made training this component tricky. So ImageBind was then used as the audio encoder and in a previous video, I showed you how efficient 
ImageBind was at, at converting between modalities seamlessly using a common embedding space. This allowed researchers to use vision text data to train the audio related branch using the same process as the visual branch. The components aligned ImageBind's capabilities with the LLM, and the paper says, despite not being explicitly trained with audio text data, Video Llama exhibits a remarkable zero shot audio understanding capability during inference. Or in English, Video Llama was pretty good at understanding what an audio clip was the first time it heard it. And voila, you have LLMs understanding videos now. Before we get to the examples, if you want to hear about all the latest AI news and want to stay updated, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Let's get into some examples, baby. These first two examples show Video Llama's ability to comprehend video and audio at the same time. In each conversation, researchers posed two questions about video and audio, and the model responded accurately. It's nuts. The researchers ask, describe what you hear. The model responds, I hear sounds of footsteps on the floor in the background, and there is also a dog barking in the house. The researchers ask, does the man wear glasses? And the model responds, yes, he wears a pair of glasses in the video. In the next figure, the researchers ask, what was the audience's response? The model responds, the audience was really enthusiastic and clapped loudly for the performer. Next, the researchers ask, what is this man doing? The model responds, he is playing a saxophone on stage at the concert. The next two examples show Video Llama's advanced ability to understand pictures. It gives a super detailed response about the dog and can even tell what's unusual about the second picture. It's basically what GPT-4 can do with images on steroids. The next two examples show Video Llama's ability to recognize landmarks and famous people. In this description, Video Llama gives painstaking detail about two characters in Game of Thrones. The last two examples show Video Llama's ability to understand temporal changes in a video or movement over time. After being asked to describe the video, Video Llama responds, The video shows a young red-haired woman who is wearing a striped shirt, posing for the camera in front of a great background. She is holding her fingers up to her mouth as if she is trying to be quiet, and the caption mentions her long hair and red lips. The woman is young with fair skin and looks calm and confident. She is holding her fingers to her mouth, which suggests she might be trying to signal something to the camera or trying to convey a message. In this example, the model is asked to summarize the video in one sentence. It says, the video shows a beautiful scenery of a cherry blossom lined river flowing by a boat on the water and a cityscape with tall buildings in the background. Then the model is asked what direction the ship is going. The model responds the ship is going towards the right side of the video. This is truly groundbreaking, but the paper did outline some limitations to the model, however. The first being perception. Video Llama is hindered by its limited data set, but the researchers are working on a better one, so that's promising. Next, there's the issue that long video, like movies or TV shows, require too much computational power, which researchers are working to fix as well. Third, there are hallucinations inherited from the frozen LLMs, but once LLMs themselves tackle this issue, this issue will take care of itself. These limitations to me seem like small potatoes, and the achievement of what's been done highly outweighs the limitations here, at least to me. A new day, a new, innovative, surprising AI development. It's safe to say Meta is killing it in the AI department, dare I say better than OpenAI. I don't want to say that because OpenAI likes to work behind the scenes and it tends to pop up with surprising advancements that change the entire world. So I won't say it's better than OpenAI, but it, it's, it's really impressive and Meta is really doing its thing. And I look forward to seeing what it comes out with next. I mean, what do you think? What does this mean for the multimodal AI world? And what do you think is next? Let me know in the comments below. Click that video to see me talk about Meta's image bind in depth, which combines the senses to make AI more human-like. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.